The topic for tonight is The Idiocy of Space Capsule Survivalism. It's from The Survivor, Volume 7. I guess you've seen the ads for freeze-dried foods. Many show a young man, a woman, a couple of kids, and usually a dog. A couple of semi-automatic rifles are in evidence. A Coleman lantern and all the paraphernalia of a ready-to-batten-down fallout shelter. You are supposed to believe these nerds are going to go into something like a state of suspended animation while the rest of the world dies miserably. Sure, they have a generator for light and VHS. But if you examine such ads, you'll notice there is virtually nothing to do. Just breathe in and out. Eat Mountain House freeze-dried foods, drink canned water, use a chemical toilet, and wait and wait and wait. But wait for what? Until their betters put the world back together again? I've seen this attitude in so many people who claim to be survivalists that I think it's about time to put survivalism in its proper perspective. First, survivalism is not a business catering to the anxieties of neurotics. From the ads you see in so-called survival-oriented publications, you might get the, the impression that all the paranoids and nervous Nellies are lining up to be fleeced by gloom and doom con artists. Such publications feature various ads for the complete equipping of your own underground nut house. What most people don't realize is that if you need a fallout shelter, you're doomed anyway. The bulk of solid fallout will fall from 30 to 40 miles downwind of ground zero. Residual fallout may cover hundreds of square miles further downwind, polluting grass, and consequently the livestock who eat it, as demonstrated by Chernobyl. Even smaller particles will rise in to the stratosphere, and you may get cancer in 20 years. Even so, our species will recover with in little incidence of mutation, as shown by Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But most of those who've gone underground will die. First, those in the suburbs downwind from ground zero will emerge to radiation and or pestilence. Second, those in upwind suburbs will have to contend with irate neighbors. A neighbor locked out of your shelter will stop up your vents with malice aforethought. If you do live to emerge after a couple of weeks or a month, crazed survivors will tear you apart. At best, you will be just another refugee. But say there is no war. What would the global population bomb kicking inexorably? It's only a matter of time and not much time at that. World population, 1850, 1 billion. 1930, 2 billion. 1975, 4 billion. 1988, 5 billion. Now, in 1994, it's over 5.5 billion. Read Paul Ehrlich's The Population Bomb. Our present burgeoning population is pushing 6 billion. With our waste products translated into pollution, we have a potential love canal in and around every city and town, smog, and, of course, the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect is already changing the world's weather patterns. It and other human waste, chemical, garbage, sewage, etc., will grow along with the population. Soon the air will not be fit to breathe, most outside vegetation will not be fit to eat, and most water will not be fit to drink. Our species has simply outbred the carrying capacity of our environment and our socioeconomic systems. So it's only a matter of time, and a short time at that, until there will be a horrendous culling of the Earth's homo sapiens. This will happen even without a nuclear war. Chernobyl, with its massive radioactive pollution of entire countries, has happily shaken the confidence of a lot of leaders that a nuclear war is both survivable and livable. The destruction would be so massive, even indirectly, there would be no winners and no government. No socioeconomic system would survive. So there may not be a nuclear war after all. So civilizations may not go out with a bang but a whooper and a stench and a racking cough, I might add. So what happens to the space capsule survivalists then? As the system deteriorates, battening down won't do much good. Urban and suburban areas will be unlivable. Riotous looters will trash every home, regardless of how many are shot during the death dance of the urbanites. But say you have sense enough to realize that our more populous areas will become death traps. So you have a bug out vehicle already, especially in the event of a red alert. You may have a closet full of survival gear ready to unload into your cab over camper. Would you also have enough dangerously stored gasoline to get you to your destination? Don't expect to buy gas on the road. And don't even expect to get far unless your vehicle can drive around all the stalled and or wrecked vehicles and maneuver well off the road. 
Aside from the shelter stupids and the bug outers, there are the hosts of overgrown Boy Scouts aping the military. In the event of a Russian invasion, the last thing we need is a bunch of infantile, fantasizing, camo clad pseudo soldiers. But the survival hucksters continue their barrage of ads for outfitting even more purdies, the jerk who gunned down the kids in Stockton. They have so glamorized all of the tinny, junky, ammo wasteful semi automatics to the point where our citizens are becoming less well armed. The only guns you need are the basic and the practical. This would be a 38 revolver for the bedroom, a shotgun for close action, and a both action, four power scope mounted 30 out 6 for reaching out. All these can be bought cheaply at a pawn shop. If they're in good condition when you buy them and you go to a range and practice using them, your efficiency as a militiaman will make you a genuine asset to any defense group. I feel strongly about this, and I'm really turned off at gun shows by camo clad adolescents skulking around trying to look fierce. This type usually wears a t-shirt saying, kill them all, let God sort them out. Our military personnel should be honored, not lampooned. As far as military equipment is concerned, I don't see a place for it in your survival preparations. Genuine military surplus clothing is good because it's sturdy and relatively cheap. If you must have it, patronize your local surplus store or gun show where you can try it on and examine it to make sure it's real military surplus. The most objectionable kind preying on survivalists are mail-order military outfitters. Looking through one of their numerous catalogs would be comic if it weren't such a rip-off of adolescence fantasizing manhood. The first thing that struck me when I got a mailbox full of them was the outrageous prices for even the totally unnecessary. One item was a reference book safe for $39.95. It was a dictionary with its pages cut out about an inch from the sides, forming a hollow for valuables. Rather than a dictionary which a guest might reach for, it should be an obscure kind of book no one would refer to. Anyone could duplicate such a safe in a few minutes with a razor knife. I can't imagine anyone so stupid as to buy such a joke, and for thirty-nine ninety-five at that. If you're so immature as to feel the need to buy military or camping equipment for emergencies, Go first to your local surplus store or to Sears or Wards. You'd be surprised at the wide selection of the same or equal quality goods as are in those catalogs and for much lower prices. This also goes for the survival catalogs. A good hardware or discount store has all you will need in the survival line. So patronize your local stores and save money on what you can examine firsthand plus the savings and postage. If you're aware of the crisis approaching our planet, save your money and don't be influenced by anyone preying on your fears. You can't buy survival. Don't be played for a sucker. What you're going to need to survive is a location about 100 miles from any sizable city. War or no war, temporary survivors will spread out like locusts. Best to be in a small town out of their range. Thus, you'll need a house, preferably with about a half acre, a basement, and within the town limits. The basement is a necessity in case of a nuclear war. A follow-up on Chernobyl pointed out that the radiation outside was 40 times that within a structure. A basement would be that much more protective. Another thing about buying is that aside from a fire extinguisher, medications, and a generator, you should never buy for emergencies. By its very nature, an emergency is something not anticipated. We don't really know what will happen in the next couple of years. Maybe nothing. So you shouldn't loot your bank account for a lot of things you won't need soon. But in light of what might happen, here's a rule of thumb. Consider what you have, what you use all the time, and simply buy more. Now in anticipation of hard times, adapt your present lifestyle to a more conservative one. Stop buying what you will have to process later. Don't buy bread, buy grains, grind them and bake your own bread. Don't buy milk by the gallon, buy it by the large box, dried and storable and learn to use it. It's ever so much cheaper and just as good. Whenever tempted to buy processed foods, think. Can you process them yourself, cheaper and with simple ingredients? Then do it. Buy tools, not to store away, but to learn to use now. Consider the articles and the survivors. Buy tools and whatever else you would need to do the project. You'll gain valuable skills for an uncertain future. Food is a big item. Learn Sprouting, see Survivor Volume 1. Read You Can Survive the Nuclear Winter, pages 266 to 
through 273 of the Survivor Volume 1. Modify that greenhouse to occupy the whole sunny side of your house. Have a side door from your house leading to it. Instead of two sides, as illustrated in the first edition, have but one side and tuck the top of the other side under the eaves of that side of the house. The greenhouse will grow fallout-free vegetables. Maybe you know nothing about growing things. Learn. Start out by raising African violets or something else commercial to pay for that greenhouse. As you learn, you'll understand hydroponics. The Survivor, Volume 2, pages 594 through 650. Such a greenhouse would quickly pay for itself, even by saved energy costs. It would shade your house from the worst summer heat on that side and so would save on air conditioning costs. In the winter, it would collect heat from the sun and heat the sunny side, thus saving heating bills. Being a food producer, your greenhouse would be an asset to the neighbors. They would even protect you from potential looters. Don't make survival purchases yet. First, invest in knowledge. Buy all my books, of course. Also, a complete set of back issues of the Mother Earth News would be a treasure. Get a set of the Foxfire books. Also, scrounge secondhand bookstores for back issues of organic gardening and farming. All these are not only valuable, but interesting. Don't forget books on greenhouses. So don't be a nerd with the suicidal space capsule survivalist mentality. Become what you'll need to be. I don't think you'll have a chance of surviving unless you make yourself worthy of survival. This means not only learning self-sufficiency, but having something to pass on to the next generation. Okay, here I am again. The phone number is 501-437-2963. And the mailing address for the $10 information packet is P.O. Box 95, Alpena, Arkansas, 72611. And remember, tell what you want as your premium, the uh, Root Rot or the Fuel Book. Now, the Root Rot gives a complete lie to Alex Haley's roots and shows how the blacks were not stolen from Africa or kidnapped. They were actually rescued, and even the worst fanatic after reading the first five or six pages would have to admit that. And then there's the fuel book. I'll talk about that later. Hello, Kurt Saxon here. Hi, Kurt. How you doing? Doing fine. This is Mark from Virginia. Hi, Mark. Uh, um, a couple weeks ago, I've been listening to you for about a month now. Um, a couple weeks ago, you were talking about uh, wheat and how to make your own bread out of, like, I think you were talking wheat, rye, and corn. Yeah. Cornmeal. Um, what book is that in, that recipe and everything? Well, that's in Survivor Volume 1. Oh, Okay. And, uh, yeah, because I, I wanted to order some of your books. I already got your packet. Mm hmm and Did you like the packet? Yeah, yeah, I like everything in it. Okay. And uh, the other thing you're talking about, I think it was the same night, you were talking about ways to store wheat, and you buy it by bulk. How, how did that work? Well, like you go to your feed and seed store, uh -huh. or if you don't have one nearby, or if you're in a deep southern state where they don't grow uh, the uh, hard red winter wheat, then you might have to order it from your health food store for a few dollars more, but it's certainly worth it. Uh -huh. And then you bring it home, and the best way to store it to keep weevils from getting it, then you uh, put it in, like, uh, the large plastic Ziploc baggies, not the sandwich size, but the, the next larger, uh -huh. and uh, just fill those with it. Because, see, if you've got even one weevil egg uh -huh. in your, your bag of uh, grain then uh, while you're just sitting around watching TV, they are breeding like rats. Right. And uh, they'll, they'll have your whole batch ruined. And you'll be able to see them? And uh, uh, yeah, you'll be able to see them, but by the time you see them, it's too late. Right, but if you divide, like if you buy... If you divide it, then, then you're, there's very little chance. I mean, like I used to store my wheat and stuff in jars, uh -huh. and maybe one jar would be contaminated, the rest of the jars would be fine. Right. Of course, the contaminated stuff you can always give to the chickens or boil it right. for dog food. Uh -huh. You don't need to throw anything away. Mm -hmm. uh, how long will wheat store like that? Oh, for indefinitely. Indefinitely? Uh, it, it will... You, it should store well enough to sprout for from three to five years if it's uh -huh. kept in a cool, dry place. Uh, yeah, and you were you were talking that same way, I think, about some way of rotating, like you, you use a bag at a time, then you replace it? Well, like, for instance, say you uh, go to a, a discount food store. Uh-huh. And uh, say just you, for instance, say that you like peas. Uh-huh. And you eat peas all the time. 
and just you, you just use your imagination what you're doing. So you buy ten cases of peas. Right. And then you mark them one to ten. Uh-huh. And then you start using out of the, the first uh, number one. Uh-huh. And when you finish that, then you go and buy another case and you mark it number 11. Right. And you start on number two. Now, after you've eaten about three cases of peas, you'll see that the, the prices of peas have risen about 10 to 25%. So you cannot lose money and you will have to save money. And doing it this way, you don't need to worry about uh, them not being good and fresh when you eat them. And, and they're, they're, they're uh, two-thirds cheaper than anything else. Right. Uh, well, like the so-called commercial survival foods. Yeah. Uh, they're garbage for the most part. They, the they cost. Yeah, they're, they're three times as much. They're just put out for suckers. Are they really 15-year shelf life? Or? Uh, well, it doesn't matter, my goodness. <laughs> uh, the only good thing you can say about commercial survival foods is that they won't taste any worse 10 years from now than they taste today. Yeah. And that's not much of an advertisement. Of course, now some of them are delicious. Yeah. But it, even so, it's not necessary. You pay in the, the stuff that's delicious. And I, I don't remember the, the brand names, but the ones that are really good tasting they cost four and five times as much as if you bought them in the store. And your system of rotating is just as good. Yeah. Oh, also, now, Carrie handed me a note, which I didn't understand at first. Uh, place one bay leaf in each sack of grain to keep the weevils away. Oh, you know? it'll work? Good. Well, it should work. Uh, it can't hurt. It, it can't hurt, but it wouldn't keep them away because they'd be there. They'd be locked in if they were there, but maybe it'd kill them. Would it kill them? Well, a, a lady told her, told him uh, some, some time or another, and if a lady says so, it must be true. <laughs> I'll give her a try. Um, I, I take it that you're not a, a fan of American Survival Guide. I, I've been re- no, that's that, that's a ripoff oh, uh, publication. I've been reading it for about two years. Yeah. Well, if you 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 can read it for ten years and not get much good out of it. There are occasionally good articles in it, but. From what I've heard, and I can't prove it, they are owned by a consortium of about seven different commercial survival food oh. companies. Yeah. And uh, I counted uh, in, in one magazine, there was counting half pages and quarter pages and full pages, there were 11 pages of uh, ads for commercial survival foods. Well, the packet I got from you, I've learned a lot more than... I, from reading all those, Mike. Well, that's that's my purpose. Yeah. Um, okay, I want to get your Survivor 1, I think, and then your uh, chemistry book. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, can I just call that number that's on my informa- information packet? Do you have a Visa or a Master Charge? Yes, I do. Okay, you call that number. Uh, well, now, if you, you ought to subscribe to the Survivor or U.S. Right. Militia. That way you get 10% off instead of 18 apiece or 1620. That's a help. Right, I'm going to get both of them. Okay. The U.S. Militia and uh, mm-hmm. the other Well, one. with the U.S. Militia, you'll start off with the first three issues, uh-huh. and you'll have that issue three to give to a friend. Uh-huh. And then I'm working on issue four. We've been held up. We're snowed in. My goodness, we are snowed in. Twelve inches outside. Man, it's coming up this way. Yeah, well, it's, it's just batting down, yeah. but we have everything we need, uh, so it really doesn't matter. But, uh, oh, incidentally, I am supposed to... Uh, for people who would like to see me on TV, I'm on the Jerry Springer show, and uh, it, that is supposed to air tomorrow morning. Good. At least it's out of Channel 33 in Springfield, Missouri. Now, it's uh, uh, syndicated, so they send the tapes to the various stations. It's not live like Donahue. Uh-huh. So uh, if, uh, if I'm not on in your area then, at least that's the time where they're hitting the area. See, so just turn on Jerry Springer, and if it's the one about uh, the uh, burglar suing the person who shot him, that's the one I'm on in a few minutes Great. into the program. And if it's something else, well, hey, it's up to you if you like to watch it. Yeah. Um, are, are the grain mills still getting out on time now? Or? Well, uh, they're... they're uh, Sue said that she would try to do better, but they had just gotten swamped. Uh, like I said the other night, uh, their business over the last three months has increased dramatically. They might even have to hire more help. Right. Because well, more people are waking up. Right, right. I'm going to order one anyway. Well, you do that. Well, it'll it, you'll get it, uh-huh. see. I mean, just don't hold your breath for it. Right. Uh, they, they, if they process, well, it, it usually gets there within seven days after the UPS picks it up. Uh-huh. But they do get around to sit, and usually it's not more than a week, 10 days before a person gets it. But 
where they just swamp with orders, well, what do you expect? I'm in no rush. Yeah, okay. Well, just put the, the, the rule is that the quicker you order it, the uh, quicker you're going to get it. Quicker I'll get it anyway. Yes, okay then. It was good time to you. Okay, buddy. Bye for now. Okay, the phone number again is 501 437 2963. And in case you just wandered on, the frequency is 5.810 megahertz. And the uh, uh, mailing address is P.O. Box 95, Alpena, Arkansas, 72611. Now, the fuel book, as opposed to the, uh, oh, here's another call. I'll get to that sooner or later. Hello, Kurt here. Hello, Kurt. How you doing? Doing fine. Good. Uh, my name's Ben. I, I've called you a couple of times. And, uh, you know, I listen to your show every evening. Okay, Ben. I agree with most things you say and uh, mm-hmm. real good ideas. And In fact, I've got your books. And uh, and uh, I really enjoy them as far as the information goes. Mm-hmm. You know, but I wanted to ask you a question. I was wondering if you were, are, are you aware of, the, like, the earth changes that are, like, taking place right now? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I wanted to ask you a question. Do you believe, the, do you believe the, all that that's going on right now, you know, the earthquakes, the floods, the, the winter, uh, real bad winters, do you think that, don't you think that fits perfectly with what the Bible says will take place during the tribulation? Well, not necessarily. You see, when pe- what we're talking, depending on the prophecy you're talking about or the prophet you're talking about. Well, I'm talking about Jesus. Well, now, wait a minute. What, what, what Jesus prophesied came true shortly after, his, uh, after he left. I know, but see, you don't believe in dual prophecy? No. Okay. I, no, I don't see any reason to believe Well, he it. explained exactly what would take place before the end of the age. Well, you see, uh, what happens... Uh, uh, about the earthquakes and the tremors in the earth, well, that has been happening for millions of years. But not like it is now. See, well, uh, it's being felt more now because there's more people to, for it to affect. If we had a population of 150 years ago, that uh, uh, Los Angeles quake wouldn't even have gotten into our papers. Right. See? Well, yeah. Now, you, you believe the way you want to. I, I, yeah. That's, that's well, not there, my, in my area. I want you to know that there's a lot of the listeners, radio listeners of yours, that, that believe what I, what I believe. Well, I, that's you know. fine. Fine. If it comforts you, go with it. It's not going to hurt you to believe that. Right. Well, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's not of my interest to keep you from believing it. Yeah, I understand. Every, every man has his own right to believe what he wants to. Yeah. Uh, well, can... Uh, uh, do you mind if I, I give the address of that newsletter that I've been putting out? You know. You okay. Now we we won't make a big habit of it, okay. but you go right ahead. All right. It's uh it's S W M, and that stands for Seventieth Week Ministries, which is means I think we're in the tribulation right now. Well, I do too. Okay. S W M, and the the address is Post Office Box seven seven one, Gladewater, Texas, and the zip code is seven five six four seven. Mm-hmm. And well, give it again. Okay, S W M, and uh, the address is Post Office Box seven seven one, Gladewater. And that's spelled with a G. Mm-hmm. This that's Texas. Zip code seven five six four seven. You know, if anybody out there feels like we're, you know, if they feel like we're possibly in the tribulation and, and believe like like I do and believe the Bible. I mean, I believe the Bible one hundred percent. God and you know, inspired by God. Well. Himself. Now, that's fine. I have yeah. no quarrel with that at all. But, you see, as far as I'm concerned, it really doesn't matter what we believe as long as we're going on the same path. Yeah, but, you know, when I started this newsletter, you know, when you first started, I listened to you when you first got on. Uh, people all over the country are feeling the same thing, and, and they don't even know each other. And a lot of people are writing me saying the same thing. Yes. Uh, that, and they don't even know each other. And they're, they're well, saying, all over the world. Yeah. Well, they feel like in the next few months, well, lots of people think in the next few months we're going to see horrible, horrible things taking place. Well, we've, we've already gotten Clinton. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see, the, the thing with Clinton is that as I was reasoning it out, uh, See, Clinton was an Arkansas boy, just an ignorant redneck hillbilly. Bless his heart. So am I. <laughs> uh, but he was, uh, he, he had no ethics or morals. Right. And that's the kind that go into politics. See, you, you've got to be crooked to, to be a politician. That doesn't mean you've got to be a crook. Now, the problem that uh, he encountered was that, see, we've got a good old boy network here in Arkansas, and it's the same way in a lot of other states. And Tyson's uh, Chicken Company and all of these other big people, they will spot young upcoming politicians with no morals or ethics, 
and they'll tap them on the shoulder and say, look, if you help us to get bills passed, if you help us to keep the inspection men out of our plants, if you help uh, get a certain things we're doing overlooked, we will give to your campaign and we'll help you. And then w the higher up you go, uh, you sort of think back to us and you help us later on, see? It's, now, it doesn't mean that Clinton is a crook, mm -hmm. but he has to be crooked to get where he is. So he got to be a governor. Well, I definitely think he was chose for mm -hmm. his position by people with, uh, with great amounts of money. Well, yes, he was. I think it was. Uh, okay, but see, here's the problem they ran into. Now, on a local level from this state, he had these good old boys who are just old money and big money in the state. And he was fine for them, but now he gets up, he's playing ball with the big boys. Right. And they want someone who is not only crooked, but smart, too. And he has failed them. And so I think what they're working to do is get him out. Right. Because he just does not work. Because you take all of the different governors all over the country, you can find plenty of them who don't have the ethics of a snake, but they're smart. Right. See, and that's what the big boys want. Now, if it hadn't been for all of the garbage in this country that voted him in, the, the homosexuals... I don't the, think we voted him in. I think... I, well, I didn't vote him in, and I don't I, think well, you voted for him. But, I didn't vote him in either, but I, I, don't, I don't think he had the majority of the vote, which I know... Well, he, he did have the majority of the vote. Well... So the thing is, so he, he gets up there, and he's put into office by the losers of the country, and here he's facing the big boys who know how to play the dirty games, mm -hmm. and they can't rely on him, and so I think that they're going to get him impeached. They're going to well, get he, him out. Well, he's about to go out, and when yes. he goes out, we're going to, I think we'll see a lot, a lot of bad things. Take place. I want to ask you one question before I hang up. Okay. Uh, has anybody taken Bill Cooper's place on that hour? Uh, I talked to Steve Wolf today. And they have uh, some old-timey programs and music and stuff like that, and they're waiting for somebody else to come in who is already contracted. Uh -huh. But there are but three or four of them they're sort of dickering with. I see. So they're not quite sure uh, who is going to actually get it. Now, I have talked to Steve, and we're pretty sure that they, we can get me on the weekends yeah. shortly. Right. And, uh, but uh, Bill Cooper, he's on at 11 o'clock. Okay, so, well, I was hoping I could take his place. <laughs> well, uh, you'd have to talk to Steve Wolf about it. I'm on AM. I got, I got, I got on AM out of Nashville, yeah. but, but uh, everybody keeps asking me all these, all this mail I'm getting if I'm going to get on shortwave. So. Yeah, well, just uh, talk to Steve or Adam Locke about it, and they're really nice people. Okay. They'll smooth the way for you. Well, for your listeners, I'm on WLAC 1510 on the AM on Wednesday nights at 10:15 Central. Okay. Okay, that's WLAC at 10.15? P.M. on Central Time on Wednesday, every Wednesday night. Okay. It covers 28 states, so okay, they glad heard your that. way ought to pick it up good. They heard that. Hey, listen, I appreciate your help, and uh, take care. Anytime. Oh, but let, let me clear up one thing. Okay. Now, see, uh, you've heard Rush Limbaugh, haven't you? Oh, yes. Okay, now he says anything that his listeners want him to say because he wants to keep them no matter what. Cause well, he, I, yeah, well, I don't do But I don't do that. Neither thing. do you, I know. So uh, I want you to think for yourself. Yeah, well, most people don't want to hear what I have to say. Yeah, okay, well, that's fine, that's fine. But it's the, I think it's the truth, at least. I, I, but you I, see, people I, like Rush Limbaugh wants everybody to listen to him. He, he doesn't want them to think. He wants them to believe everything he says, and therefore he's going to assure them that he believes everything that they did. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, want to, do I, I want to give everybody a Christian viewpoint of everything, from, you know, because I believe that Jesus Christ is the only way we're going to get to heaven. Well, okay, if that's, if, if that's your way, you go with it. Okay. Hey, take care. I appreciate it, Kurt. Okay, buddy. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Okay, here I am again. Uh, phone number is 501-437-2963. The mailing address is P.O. Box 95, Alpena, Arkansas, 72611. Hello, Kurt here. Hello, Kurt. This is Dan. How you doing? Howdy, Dan. Hey, listen, I, I get your show in up here in Iowa, but it comes in kind of weak sometimes. I'm sorry. Well, if I get on uh, weekends, maybe it'll be on better at well, that time. Well, that's right. I, I just wanted to, to clarify something there in your, in your monologue towards the end. You mentioned four different... Uh, I think they were magazines, organic gardening, Foxfire, the survivor, of course. Well, Foxfires are, are a set of books. That, those are books, and there yes. was another one in there that the I... The Mother Earth News? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, the, and that was the four. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you so much. You're very welcome. All right, bye-bye.
Okay, the phone number is 501-437-2963. Now, let me get on this fuel book, uh, which you can get as part of the $10 information packet. I'm going to get to that sooner or later. Uh, hello, Kurt here. Yeah. Uh, hello? Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I keep hearing people talking about the government, the government, the government. Is this Stan? Yeah. Bless your heart, Stan. Let's hear it. Okay. The government is, in this country, is a written document because we're supposed to have a republic. They've been trying for a hundred Well, now, wait a minute. Wait. We're supposed to have a republic, a republic, but we have a democracy, so everything is going to hell, right? No, no. As long as they give the oath of office, we have a republic. No, no. As long as it's a representative government, it's a republic. It is not a representative government. It is a government of chaos where the majority rules, and that is it's a democracy. That's not true. That, that's absolutely untrue. That's what they want you to believe, and that is a lie. Well, I'm sorry. I'm a liar. Well, no, you're not a liar. You just don't understand. You see, they're better liars than we are understanders. Well, I guess so, Stan. Uh, how, how, can you, how can you tell when you've got socialism? Well, I don't know because I've never lived under socialism, although I suppose you think I, I do. Of course, commun no, uh, I, I, democracy is about the we, nearest thing all, to socialism. Well, unless you know how to observe it, uh, when you pay a tax, and that tax is used to run the public library, or that tax is run to use, run the school system, or that tax is run to, to run the army, or that tax is run... Okay, we get the idea now. Go on, you made your point. Come on. Okay, well, what I'm saying is that we had the most wonderful uh, contract that preserved our inalienable rights under the laws of nature and nature's God. You see, if you don't read your Declaration of Independence and know that we were trying to back away from this Britain gov British I know that. I know that, Stan. All right, now, uh, what what was ruling the British government back in the, 16, uh, in the, in the late 1600s? King George. Early 1700s. What was ruling their government? The monarchy. Okay, they, they had a king, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, the king was taking his orders from the money changers. Well, that's fine. And you know how the money changers operate? Well, they proved that he was insane. Well, that don't matter. They they like insane people, but... Well, I hate to have an insane king. It just frets me. <laughs> but, you see, he didn't give oath to office to our Constitution. So whenever you say government in this country, what you should say is a government run by the people who are in in the office who are not upholding their the Constitution, which they swore to defend and uphold and gave oath to. Yeah. You, you have to give oath to vote in this country, don't you? I don't vote anymore. I voted for Wallace about 30 years ago, but, and I didn't like it, and I've never voted since. Well, now, you see, uh, God keeps you alive because you breathe. You do breathe, don't you? Uh, hardly. <laughs> when you get on, I'm breathless. Uh, yeah, but anyway, all I'm trying to say is common sense is common sense. Uh, would you start out some night reading a, a little at uh, the beginning of Tom Paine's Common Sense? Yes. Well, I have read Tom Paine's Common Sense several times. Well, that's what that's what gave us this government that we've got. Uh, with, well, Tom Paine uh, wrote like, the did, Constitution. You know, uh, Limbaugh uh, says that he's such a big writer that so many people buy his uh, pr publications. Yeah. But Tom Paine's common sense uh, was sold to over 10 percent of the people that were alive and, and, and in this country at that time. I would say Tom Paine is the actual father of our country. Yes, sir. I would too. Now the, uh, Valentine last night was talking about Calhoun. Have you heard of Calhoun? Well, is, wasn't he that black guy in uh, Amos and Andy? I'm not sure. I think he was from South Carolina, but I've got to read something now about Calhoun because I'm interested in any people with ideas because, you see, ideas are going to your brain and they're part of the tool. To Have you work. ordered my information packet, Stan? Yes, sir, and Good. I've been reading it. Did you get it yet? Um, uh, most of it I've read before. Oh. I think I could survive uh, quite a bit, uh, you know, as it is. But the main thing is getting along with your fellow man, no matter how many you got. Okay, now let's just leave it with that thought and let somebody else talk, Stan. Thank you a whole lot Thank for you. calling, buddy. Good to talk to your program. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, the phone number is 501-437-2963. And this fuel book, which you can get is, my goodness, Hello, Kurt Saxon here. Yes, sir. I'm glad to speak with you finally. I uh, sent for your information, and it only took me about five days from the time I sent for it. Very good. Um, the question I had is I subscribed to both the uh, U.S. militia and the shoestring entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I re- did you get them yet? Yes, sir, I did. It came in all in one package, all in one big box. Mm-hmm. Uh, the question I have is, I'm looking at the Shoestring Entrepreneur, it says Volume 1, Number 1, and then it goes to the Survivor, Volume 8, Number 3, and then it jumps... Uh, well, I mean, now you see the Survivor is, that was the last, that Survivor Volume 8. Right. So I did Survivor Volume 8, Issues 1 to 12, and you, uh, you, you're probably missing a couple of them because we didn't have any more. We just gave them away, see? see? And then we made a name change. See, there was a lot in the Survivor that was pretty radical, and so I figured, okay, now that I got U.S. Militia out, I'll put the really radical stuff in U.S. Militia, and I will change the Survivor. No radical, I mean, I'll, shoestring entrepreneur, nothing radical, just business, how to take care of your family, get along like that, see? Okay. So the, the, the survivors you got were freebies. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I was wondering, is there a way to get the back issues that I'm missing? No, not no, because we ran out. Okay. See, but uh, that I'm working on Survivor Volume 5 now, and then when I finish it, I'll do Volume 6 and then 7, and then anything that's missing in your packet of survivors that I sent you free will be all in there because I do have makeover uh, issues that I won't give away. Okay. Okay, well, thank you very much. That's the only question I had, and I really enjoy your show. Well, I'm glad. Thank you, sir. Have okay, a- bye for now. Bye-bye. Okay, the phone number is 501-437-2963, and this fuel book tells you how to make, oh, alcohol and uh, how to distill, make booze for, for your car or for yourself, and it's uh, free with the $10 packet. Hello, Kurt Saxon here. Hi, Kurt. This is Ron in uh, Texas. Bless your heart, Ron. Nice to hear from you. How you doing, Kurt? Doing all right. Your program, Jerry Springer? Yes. Will be on Wednesday on KTRK out of Houston. Oh, okay. That's good. So tomorrow's Wednesday. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Now, how did you know that? Well, because I have a program in front of me. Well, is it the TV guide? Yep. Because my TV guide doesn't list what's on the what with the subject matter. Okay, it says Jerry Springer, convict, sued, victim, and won. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's the one I'm on. So the people around Texas, it's tomorrow morning. At 10 o'clock. At 10 o'clock. Okay, so I come on about 10, 15 minutes after that, and uh, it's the only time I ever got applause on a show. I won't be here, so I'll set it up on the VCR. Okay, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Okay. But now, that, that it being there at 10 o'clock tomorrow, well, it's going to be 10 o'clock here, too. Yes. So uh, I don't know if it would be all over the country, but people should just tune in and see what they're talking about. If they're talking about the burglar, I'm the, that's the one I'm on. Yeah. And if it's not on tomorrow, it'll probably be on the next day or two, because they, when they syndicate them, they, they go pr- around uh, pretty fast. Well, I, ha- having listened to your program now for quite a while, I'm... Uh, looking forward to uh, to seeing this Jerry Springer show because I'll bet you handled it real good. Well, I, I have to admit I did. <laughs> and I, I had a ball. I think we all love you, Kurt. Well, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Ron. Okay, the phone number is 501-437-2963. And when you order the information packet for $10, say whether you want root rot about the slavery or the fuel book, and you'll get one or the other, and that it also uh, you'll get uh, $5 off on either subscription. Hello, Kurt Saxon here. Good evening, sir. This is Don down in Louisiana. Hi, Don. Uh, Al Gunn from J. Cal holding the lawyer. Yeah, you had him right. Yeah. Uh, uh, what happened to Bill Cooper on the next hour? I was hoping you'd get that time. Well, uh, it would just, uh, things didn't work out right, but I'm trying to get on in the weekends later. Uh, Bill Cooper switched to 11 o'clock. I think uh, we see the thing is the problem with uh, just the, like, for instance, people in California can hear me at uh, 4 o'clock, and most people are at work. And then at yeah. 5 o'clock, they could hear him, but still most people are driving home from work. Right. So you see, so since he went up to 11 o'clock, then everybody in the country can hear him. Of course, the, the late people. He comes on pretty late on the East Coast, so maybe a lot of his listeners will be in bed. But uh, anyway, he just considered that was a better hour for him. And uh, uh, like I said earlier on, uh, the the guy at the radio station isn't quite sure who's coming on after me. Uh Uh-huh. 
Well, nobody wants to miss a comedy time there with Bill Cooper. After all, I mean that rifle he's recommending. That'll oh. knock a sweetening out of a ginger cake. What what kind of rifle is he recommending? Three seventy five H and H actually improved. Yeah. With a thirty inch barrel. Mm -hmm. Any of your hundred and five pound friends would like to shoot that thing twice. My goodness. Well, I don't know anything about that rifle. What's yeah. the characteristics? He's, he's beating the drum loud and long for everybody to have one built. With oh, a built? Barrel. And uh, this thing is supposed to be a long range sniping rifle, can you imagine? Hmm. He knows nearly about as much about guns as he does about religion. And he don't know nothing about religion. Well, now you said it. I didn't. I haven't heard him hardly at all. Uh, he was just impossible for me to pick up. Uh, and and so, uh, although <clears throat> my only association with him has been cordial, I can't comment on his program because <laughs> I haven't heard it enough to, to criticize it, and I wouldn't anyway because he's a sweet man. He's doing what he thinks is right, and you've got to give him credit for that. And if you, if you get a laugh out of his show, even if he doesn't intend it, then bless him. Right. <laughs> I've been studying guns since I learned to read, Kurt. I'm a, yeah. uh, what they call a gun crazy kid. Yeah. And I got every book and magazine that's ever been published, and I'm only 63. Do you have the, uh, the, the poor man's James it's Bond? It's amusing to me to hear him recommending a caliber that's not, that's not, not a handful of men in the country that want to shoot that thing three times. Well, I'm think I'm sure Janet Reno would approve of him. Oh, yeah, if she could, if she could hire some foreigner to shoot the thing like old Harucci. Yeah. Uh, but he, he he got nothing better to do uh, than go around murdering women and kids, so uh, uh, he could probably learn to shoot the thing. <laughs> Possibly so. By the way, do you have the Poor Man's James Bond series? Oh, yeah. Oh, like like volume yeah, four? I'm too strong on you. I got, I got uh, uh, eight of them big heavy books in one box from you. Well, in two boxes, nevertheless. Yeah, good. Man, I tell you. I come right on up. I decorate my envelopes. You you remember my envelope from, from Louisiana with them, with them stickers and, and all that stamping all over? Well, I don't take care of the mail anymore. My wife and Sandy and Helen do that. I guarantee you they remember them. Yeah, I'm sure they do. I decorate them up real good with all kind of stamps and rubber stamps and stuff. I just good. have fun in a little bit. Well, that way you, you pass on the word to the, all of the people who handles the mail. Right. I tell them don't know, vote no on gaps, vote no on uh, all this crazy stuff they're doing. I write it all over the envelope. Well, they're, they're federal employees. They don't vote. They, 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 they know they too much about it. Coop. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I enjoy your show, Kurt. I'll drop by and see you one of these days and bring you some mead and, uh, from my homebrew beer so you find out okay. better than Budweiser does. Okay, then. <laughs> see you there, Mark. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Okay, again, the phone number is 501-437-2963. And if you order that information packet for your $10, you'll get a sample copy of U.S. Militia, Shoestring Entrepreneur, and your choice either of Root Rot or the Fuel Book. Hello, Kurt Saxon here. Kurt, I'm mad at you. Why? I didn't get my information package yet. Well, for pity's sakes, uh, when did you send for it? Almost five six weeks ago. Oh, that, well, look, send the card, and the girls will just automatically send you another thing, and uh, send the card and say, instead of the Koresh or the fuel book, you want root rot. I don't want root rot. Well, I'm go I'd like to send you one. I don't want that one. I, I, I want the fuel thing, because I, I, I'm a color guy, and I don't want that this, that this and this information. No, that, that was printed over 100 years ago by Yankee Publications. What, Rut Rut? Yes. That don't make it no prayer book. Well, you don't pray, you read it. <laughs> See? I was telling it was written 116 years ago. It don't make it no prayer book. Well, it would interest But the fuel you. book I could use, though. Okay, then. Alcohol, well, so. Okay, well, you can uh, pray a lot after you brew you up some booze. But uh, uh, but on uh, on the serious thing though, why? why is well, it, anyway, uh, 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 are you you you're, you're you're not sending our names into the FBI for for some list, are you? I don't think they could use it. What would they do with it? We don't really matter, do we? I don't think so. They're, they're not interested in me. Why would they be interested in the likes of you? You're probably right. Well, see, they they got to they're they're swamped with dopers and stuff like that. Uh, they don't have anything to do with us terrorists. Yeah, they're, all, they're always interested in those that don't go along with the party line. Like yeah, well, I don't, I don't think they know what the party line is anymore. I sure don't. Oh, uh, you know what the party line is. I, well, I don't, well, you may have some kind of an idea of a party line in your mind, but I, we're, we're not on the same 
wavelength. Okay, I, but I, 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 I'm not going to send you any note. You, you. Well, okay, but look, would you, you might send me one of those funny packages. <laughs> no, you want you want the fuel uh, unless you request it. I don't have your name, so you just unless That's you true. just send a card and say you sent for it five day five weeks ago and you didn't get it, and so you want instead of Koresh, you want uh, the fuel book. I'm a little paranoid. Okay, well, I'll, try not to be paranoid. It doesn't pay. Okay, Kurt. All right, thanks a lot. Okay, buddy. Bye for now. Okay, the phone number is 501-437-2963, and the uh, mailing address is P.O. Box 95, Alpena, Arkansas, 72611. And uh, with your $10, uh, you'll get a uh, $5 off on either su the subscription to the uh, uh, U.S. Militia or Shoestring Entrepreneur, and uh, choose whether you want Root Rot or the Fuel Book. Hello, Kurt here. Hi, Kurt. Good evening. Caught your uh, program now for uh, a couple of weeks off and on, and uh, I, it's funny, I ran across your name by accident. I was looking up another author by the name of Saxon and uh, ran across yours. Yeah. And uh, notice you had published books. One was called The Survivor or Survivalist. Or no Survivor. There's okay. four volumes. And then A Poor Man's James Bond. Yes, that's a, an encyclopedia on do-it-yourself weaponry. Okay, I was going to ask you to, to kind of give a, 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 I guess, an overview or an abstract on each of those books, for, if you could, for me. Well, it would be a little hard uh, if you, why don't you send for the information packet, and they describe all of the books, but just as a thumbnail thing, the, uh, the, they have about six different books in each volume, like, for instance, in volume one is the original Poor Man's James Bond, then they got, uh, uh, Let's see now. Fireworks and explosives, like Granddad used to make, explosives, matches, and fireworks. Uh, Weingart's pyrotechny, which is a classic work on uh, fireworks. American pyrotechnists, we shall fight in the streets. Arson by electronics, a fantastic book by a uh, Florida fire marshal who wanted to warn people how people do it. Most people use it as a manual. And uh, then the U.S. Marines Army and hand-to-hand -hand combat and a lot more. That's just in the new improved. That's volume one. Volume two has the poor man's armorer, improvised munitions handbook, American jiu-jitsu from 1942, chemicals in war, how to make the poison gases in your kitchen, the chemistry of powder and explosives by Tenny Davis. That's more or less the Bible of the explosives people. And then volume three has uh, the weaponeer, uh, the Gunsmith's Manual from 1883, Repair or con Reconstruct 19th Century Guns, Hand Forging. Oh, just uh, that, that book has everything. Then it's got Silencers for, for the Home Workshop by Bill Holmes, uh, Booby Traps from 1965. That's the Military Manual. And then Volume 4 has uh, uh, Sapper, all about... Uh, laying and uh, deactivating mines and then they got the special forces handbook it's got the Viet Cong mines and booby traps field expedient handbook engineer soldiers handbook uh, modern gunsmithing by Clyde Baker which is a 1933 classic uh, hand loaders manual Earl Nearmore 1937 it's another classic the science of powders cartridges expert course on overall reloading well if you got this set of books uh, you're set up no matter what happens. It's a, uh, the best encyclopedia of overall weaponry from the layman's point of view, things that you can make yourself. A uh, quick question, if I may. Sure. Um, I, I guess uh, my understanding has been, and it may be incorrect, that it was uh, against the law to make explosives or to at least detonate them. Oh, it certainly is. Oh, okay. So this is not the sort of thing you want to do in, on your front lawn. Well, you better not. <laughs> your back lawn may be. Back long, maybe. But, uh, see, I tell how to do it, but I don't tell you to do it. Now, when our civilization collapses and you're, uh, you, you, you figure it might be overrun by looters, well, anything goes. It's every man for himself, and let the devil take the hindmost. That's, that's a good point. But I would say never make a destructive device unless you intend to use it or throw it away real quick. Mm -hmm. You certainly never sell anything like that. Well, I would imagine, too, for those that are so inclined, that you would want to have the ability to, you would want to try it at least once to know what's involved. Well, yes, and I would say I'm, wear heavy gloves and goggles and do it uh, just a, a pinch at a time. Right. The idea is not to try to learn, you know, while the looters are on your front. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you'll you learn enough 
by doing it. And then, of course, if you buy my tapes, it shows how in, in living color. Oh, okay. That, that's part of the information. Yes. Okay. Oh, well, the, the informational packet will just open a new world to you and uh, just tell what you want uh, as your premium, which is this fantastic book on uh, forget the gas pumps, make your own fuel. And also, I mean, fuel is booze, right. see? I mean, you either drink it or put it in your car. I don't care. And uh, it's very simple, very nice. And then, or else there's root rot, and uh, that tells about uh, the real. It, it shows how Alex Haley was a liar and a fraud, and Roots was garbage, and uh, it's proven. See, it's it's an, it got 11 different stories pr printed from uh, uh, books over 100 years old. And was a plagiarizer? Well, he certainly was. Well, I've got the uh, newspaper article telling how he was. Uh, Find and had to pay a quarter of a million dollars to Corlander, who wrote The African, from which uh, Alex Haley stole the basis of the book. Okay. Well, I'll t they both sound intriguing, although uh, I'm, I'm a fuel man myself. Yeah, okay. Then on your thing there, just uh, wh when you order the information package, just say send the fuel book. Good enough. And, and by the way, I'll let you know that... Uh, all circuits are busy into 501 land, uh, trying to get a hold of you. So. My goodness, well, that's gratifying. Sometimes there are really dead spaces there. <laughs> hey, I appreciate talking with you. It's been a pleasure. Okay, buddy. Bye for now. Good night. Okay, the phone number is 501-437-2963. And if you'd like to get a set of these tapes, they're $25 for a week's shows or $6 a piece, postpaid. Give you the address in just a minute. Hello, Kurt Saxon here. Yeah, uh, this is uh, Bob in New York. Uh, I was listening about the uh, alcohol fuel uh, that uh, you can make uh, from one of your publications. Yeah. Well, I have a public... Uh, somebody was telling me about uh, alcohol. If it feeds into a carburetor, it uh, will destroy, uh, you know, the uh, the seals and the gaskets. It'll uh, react with them to uh, destroy them. Is that well, true? Well, uh, it could be true. It all depends. Now, there are books which this does not cover, but uh, if you're going to go in for fuel and you're actually going to put it in your gas tank, then you would want a book uh, telling about how to modify it so that uh, the alcohol doesn't hurt anything inside your engine. All right. Is that, is that what your book uh, tells you? Uh, I don't think so. I just read the part about, uh, uh, well, let's see. It does. It does. Sure. Uh-huh. Sure, it tells about, uh, shows you the engine and how it works and like that. Well, I mean, what do you have to mix with the alcohol to make it... Uh, you don't mix anything with it. You just uh, put the alcohol in it. Oh, in with your fuel? No, no, you... Gasoline. No, you, you... The idea is you're burning alcohol instead of gasoline. Yeah. See? But how do you prevent the alcohol from destro uh, destroying the, the gaskets and seals? Well, uh, I'm sure the book tells that, but if it doesn't, uh, ask your garage man or else uh, look it up in the library because there are more extensive books oh, I see. on it. Right. Uh, but it's, it's not... Uh, yes, let's see. Uh, what? Just a... Okay, it says here, Mechanical consultant Keith Drain holds the main fuel jet from a one-barrel carburetor. This jet must be enlarged 40%. A two-barrel carburetor will have two main fuel jets well, they, they, it tells quite a bit about it. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy knew what he was writing about. He did get expert advice. Okay, because I, I do have a book that tells you uh, how to uh, make uh, alcohol, but it didn't address uh, this other thing that people were telling me. Well, about. now, did pe were the people who told you, did they, did they know what they were talking about? Did they work with it? Well... I don't, I don't know if they worked with it, but... Uh, well, that's the kind of people you have to listen to when you're going to be doing something technical. Yeah, right, yeah, okay. All right, uh, thank you very much. Then. You're very welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, now, Jeffrey's Audio Tapes, uh, you write there for uh, P.O. Box 326, Alpena, Arkansas, 72611. That's P.O. Box 326, Alpena, Arkansas, 72611. Hello, Kurt here. Hi, Kurt, how you doing? Fine. Right. This is digging down an officer. Yes. And I got a question for you on the uh, one of the magazines you have. Uh, we're going to try one of the experiment uh, potash volcano. Mm-hmm. Any uh, particular place you can recommend getting potash besides the druggist? Uh, let's see. Now, what what is potash? 
I should know. Is that potassium nitrate? Uh, well, you got. Do you have my chemistry book? I don't have it right here in front of me. It says you go to your local drugstore you and get potash. You can't find potash. Get saltpeter. Uh, well, uh, okay. So, uh, then uh, saltpeter is potassium nitrate. Right. And you can get uh, potassium nitrate from the from the druggist. It's uh, for some kind of medicine. But uh, you just say, tell him you want saltpeter. If you say you want uh, potassium nitrate, he might think you're weird. <laughs> Well, that's okay, too. But of course, you could also, if, if you've got the... Uh, well, this is for a school experiment. It says use uh, um, pure potash at the top of the volcano. So would I use pure saltpeter? Uh, yeah, yeah. You Use salt, pure, pure saltpeter. It used to be sold as stump killer, but uh, I don't know whether it is or not now. It would be a lot cheaper if you buy it from your drugstore. Or what what issue of U.S. militia are you looking at? Oh, the introductory pack, uh, number one. Oh, okay. Well, you see, if you subscribe, then there's a, an address for the Alchemist in California. They'll sell you anything you want. They'll give you a fantastic catalog too. Uh huh. Well. Wow. And I suppose did did you like that issue? Oh, it's very good. Okay, then uh, subscribe, and you'll get a lot more information in the uh, other two issues. You'll get along with another issue three. Okay. I'll and. Uh, you know, the uh, when the big end is coming pretty quick, it, baby. Yeah. And uh, I've got a sister in Saudi Arabia. Just, you have any suggestions for her? Come home. <laughs> Needless to say. Yes, she she ought to do that. She ought to come home. All Americans should come home as quick as they can because if you're in a, a country like Saudi Arabia where they do not like white people anyway, That's uh, you're in danger because getting cut off. If she didn't wind up in the harem. Uh, she'd wind up in a ditch. I know it. Uh, they encourage everybody on Friday nights to come down to it where they execute, cut their heads off. Uh, yeah. And uh, they encourage it. Yes. And, they, you know, first we have no crime over there. Yes. And well, that's that's a good way. I, I'm I'm all for cutting off the hands of uh, criminals, uh, the heads of criminals. Absolutely. And, there's, you know, they, they don't have very many liberties or freedoms as we enjoy, but they sure don't have any crime by the same token either. Okay, okay. It's sign-off time now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.